Okay, welcome all. Uh, I guess before we start our our lesson here tonight, let's go to Yahuwah in prayer. Father Yahuwah, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you do. Father, we just ask that you continue to watch over, guide, and direct us and protect us. Father, give us wisdom, understanding, and knowledge in all that we do here tonight. Father, help us to, to glean from this lesson what you would have us to glean. All this we ask and pray in Yahushua's name. Amen. Okay, well, one of the things I want to go through is uh, understanding the Sabbath. I know there's a lot of confusion around the Sabbath and a lot of people, you know, just they, there is, you know, there's just, just, I mean, there's so many different ideas and, and teachings on the Sabbath. It's just un, unbelievable. But what I want to kind of bring out is the, you know, just talking about, about the Sabbath and what a day actually is in the Hebrew and according to scripture. So I'm going to, let's see, look at the, let's see here. Okay. Can y'all, I get, can y'all see my screen? Can y'all, okay. Y'all can see the screen. Okay. So I'm just going to start in Genesis chapter one. And uh, it says in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim was hovering over the face of the waters. And Elohim said, let there be light. And there was light. And Elohim saw that the light, it, that it was good. And Elohim divided the light from the darkness. He called the light day and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, when, when you look at this, I know that a lot of people have their own interpretation and everything. And I'm not trying to get into you know, other people's teachings or anything like that. So, I mean, you know, it's, it is what it is on all that, but I'm going to just show you what I think the scripture says. Okay. So when it, when it talks about on the first day, now understand that when it, when it says that in verse five, that Elohim called the light day and he called the, the darkness night. Well, see, I think that that's the way that it is. So during, when it says day, then, uh, you know, it, it means the day. So let's go to Exodus 20 right quick. Let me show you something here I'll, and we'll come back to this. So if we go to Exodus 20. starting in verse eight, I believe. Okay, so right here, you see where it says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it kadosh or holy or set apart. Okay, remember the Sabbath day. Okay, keep that in mind. Okay, now let's go back to, uh, to Genesis chapter one. Okay, so... In, here in Genesis chapter one, where it says that uh, in, all, in, in, in verse three, it says, and Elohim said, let there be light. And now you know that the light didn't come from the sun, moon, and stars, because that didn't come about until the fourth day. He didn't create the sun, moon, and stars until the fourth day. So here, this light is his Shekinah glory, is what this is. And so uh, and then in verse four, and it says, Elohim saw the light, that it was good, and Elohim divided the light from the darkness, and the and he called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Okay, now I'm just going to tell you what I do. Okay, now I'm not telling you this is what you need to do, because this is something you need to figure out for yourself, because it's not real clear. But for me, the Sabbath begins at sunrise, when the light, you know, when the light starts, and it ends at sunset when the when the light ends. So during it, if you go back to Exodus 20, verse eight, it says, remember the Sabbath day. Okay. So uh, that's to me, the Sabbath starts at sunrise and ends at sunset. So anyway, that's, that's where, you know, where I get to on the Sabbath. Now I want to, uh, I want to show you something else right quick. 
you know, you, you see uh, or you hear of, uh, you know, a, a lot of people that talk about, well, we don't really know when the Sabbath is because the calendars have changed. And they're pretty much true. That's true what they're saying. You know, during uh, Yahushua's time, the, the, uh, the Romans kept what's called the Julian calendar, I think is about that time. And then a little bit later, they had a calendar, like an eight day calendar. And then they had a 10 day calendar. And then they, you know, went to the Gregorian calendar. And, and so those are all man-made calendars. Now, Yahuwah's calendar, on the other hand, is the one I'm interested in is the one that Yahushua kept. So he kept the Sabbath on, you know, what day? Well, it was, you know, it, it's clear in the, in the, in the teaching that he kept it on the, the, the recognized Sabbath day. Now, you know, a lot of teaching is out there that the Romans changed the calendar and changed, you know, so we don't know if, 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 you know, Saturday is Saturday or, you know, we, we don't, we don't know if it's the Sabbath or not. Well, there's evidence, there's tons of evidence that says otherwise. So even uh, if you go back and look at some of Josephus's writings, one of the things that he wrote, now Josephus was a first century uh, Hebrew or Jewish historian. And uh, one of the things that he uh, said in, one of his, in some of his writings is that their enemies would attack them on Saturn's day because that was the, the Jews' Sabbath. So Saturn's day is the day that the pagans worshiped the god Saturn, and it's the same day that the Jews worship Yahuwah on the Sabbath. So they would say that, that you know, that the, the enemies of the Jews would attack them on Saturn's day, Saturday, because the Jews were taking their Sabbath and they wouldn't fight back. Now, later on, they learned pretty quick that that's what they were doing, and they, they, they did start fighting back. But Early on, it you know that's when they would attack. Okay, now another thing, and if you look over, you know, if you look at my screen, I've got here, there's a lot of these. I've got 68 of them listed. Now this is not an exhaustive list. There's a there's a lot more than uh, you know within this than this list. But if you go back and look, they all. Uh, you know, they all refer to the Sabbath in some way, like the Greek and the, you know, the, the Latin or Italian, the Spain, Portugal, Italy, you know, France, Germany, Prussia, Russia. So if you go down through this, all of them observe the Sabbath on Saturn's day or Saturday. And so, and a lot of these weren't, they were not uh, uh, affected by the Roman government. So a lot of these countries were outside of the Roman rule. I mean, you take, you go down into Africa and you go, you know, in different places like that, Madagascar and, you know, Borneo, there's a lot of places on there that are not, uh, that weren't under Roman rule. And I was even looking uh, at a calendar the other day that was the, I think it was the Vietnamese calendar. I think it was Vietnamese. It's one of the Oriental calendars. And the day, what it, on Saturday or the Sabbath, it says that it's called the seventh day. Okay. So, you know, on the seventh day, we are to, uh, it, it says that that is the, the Sabbath day and we are to, you know, observe the Sabbath. Now, uh, one of the things that uh, I want to show you is the, when it comes to uh, changing the Sabbath from, from the seventh day to the first day, okay, this is actually in the Catholic, uh, this is in some of their documents. So in the Catholic record of September the 21st, 1923, they wrote in there, in, in this publication, that uh, Sunday is our mark of authority, okay? And it goes down, and it, you know, so it's their mark of, of authority. And then uh, in the Converse Catechism of Catholic Doctrine of 1957, it says, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the, sol the solemnity of sat from Saturday to Sunday. 
So, I mean, when Yahuwah sets something up, can man change it? Well, I'm thinking no. Well, the Catholic Church thinks yes, okay? So this is, the, this is actually in their publication. And here in this Catholic mirror, it says that, uh, you know, they changed the day from Saturday to Sunday. So they changed it from the seventh day to the first day. Now, see, even the Christian witness, they, they know, or most people know, that Sunday is the first day of the week, and they know that it's been changed. But I want to show you, I want to show you this right quick. Uh, let me uh, find where I'm at. Okay, back to back to here. Uh, let's go to Acts 20 right quick. Acts 20, verse 7. Okay, now right here, it says, now on the first day of the week, the disciples came together to break bread. Now, do you think that's really what it says? Because that's the scripture that the Catholic Church uses as evidence that the Sabbath was changed. Okay, that one scripture. Now, I want to go to what's called the interlinear, and I want to show you something. Okay, Acts 20. Verse 7. Okay. I did it again. Acts 20. Verse 7. Well, I'll find it in a minute. Okay, <clears throat> so here in Acts 20, verse 7, if you read the red letters right here, can y'all see the red letters? Let me, let me expand it a little bit. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Okay, in the red letters is the English, and then you have the Greek, and then you have up here, you have the how you pronounce the Greek. It's a transliteration. Okay, so... It says, in then the first day of the week, having come together, we to break bread. Okay, now that's how it actually reads in the, in the Greek, or supposedly. Okay, now what I want to bring out is if you see this word day right here, that's in parentheses. That means it's not in there. And so uh, it's not, it, it's, it, that word's been added. So it says in the first day of the week right here, that's where I want to uh, spend our little focus. Okay, the word Mia right there is not first. The, the Greek word for, for first is protos. The word Mia is one. Now, let's look at this. I want to show you. If you go and look at the definition, you see the definition right here. It says one. Now, I want to just again, tell you that my daughter is one of my children, but she is not the first, okay? So one and first are not the same. Now, I want to go back. I want to show you this. Now, the word week right there is the word sabaton. The word sabaton, if you go back and look in the Greek right here, that word sabaton is the Sabbath. Okay, so what it actually says is, uh, let me bring this back up. Okay, so what this actually says in the Greek is, and then on one of the Sabbaths, having come together, we to break bread. That's actually what it says in the Greek. Okay, so on one of the Sabbaths, and that's quite a bit different interpretation than on the first day of the week, okay? Because it's completely, it's completely different. So what the Catholic Church did is to exert their authority, they deliberately changed that. And because it does not say on the first day of the week, it actually says on one of the Sabbaths. So anyway, okay, let's, let's back up a little bit and go back to, 
to Genesis. Let's see. Okay, so just looking at at the at, at the evidence of when the Sabbath starts or when the Sabbath actually is, we know that there's just tons and tons of evidence that says that the Sabbath is on the the pagan day of Saturn's day, which we call on the, in the Gregorian calendar we call it Saturday. So there's just tons and tons of evidence that that just actually proves that that Saturday is the Sabbath. And then also the Christian witness in that is that they worship on the first day of the week, just like the Catholic Church changed it. And so and and so that's the first day of the week. Well, if the, if they worship on the first day of the week, the day before that is the seventh day. So that even gives you know even the Christian witness gives credibility to when the Sabbath actually is because they know that what they worship on the first day of the week, they changed it. And so anyway, so you look at all of that. And so now we come up to this point to where the, we know that the, that the Sabbath is actually on the Saturday. That's our Sabbath. That's Yahuwah's Sabbath. And looking back at, at when Yahusha uh, observed the Sabbath, it would have been on this same Saturn's day because even right bef even before Yahusha, when uh, like I said, when the enemies would attack the nation of Israel, they would come on. They would they would attack on Saturn's day, and that's recorded in the book in uh, Josephus, uh, the historian's uh, writings. And so, you know, the, the the evidence is just overwhelming of when the Sabbath is. Now, from my perspective. You know, I'm saying that it's it starts at uh, in the morning at sunrise and ends at uh, sunset. Now, so there are, there's other evidence, and I'll I'll just tell you this: there are there is other evidence that kind of points in the in the direction of the way the Jews do it from the evening till you know from evening of one day till the evening of the next. But if you look at it. It's generally it's 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 talking about on holidays when you have to be clean on the holiday. In other words, you have to be ceremonial clean on let's let's just hypothetically say Saturday. So what the scripture says is if you defile if you defile yourself on like on a Friday, and if as long as it if it's not after sunset, then it says that you become clean at even or at sunset. So you want to be clean from sunset on the day before to, you know, for the rest of the day, especially like on the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement, from a prophetic standpoint, is the marriage day. And you want to be, you want to be completely spotless. You want to be clean and spotless on the marriage day. So what you're looking at is uh, you're, uh, you got to be clean on the evening before so you'll be clean on the wedding day on on Yom, Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement. So there is evidence that that points that other way. But now I want to I want to bring I want to just bring this up, and I want you to just try to forget what you've been taught all this time about how the day in the Jewish community how it works. But I just want you to look at this. Okay, so Yahuwah did the work. He says he created light. Look on verse three. And he said that, and, and there was light, and he said that it was good. And then he worked again. He divided the light from the darkness. Okay, that's work. And then he called the light day and the darkness he called night. And then there was the evening and the morning, and that was the first day. Okay, so if you look at this, let's look at the second day. And Elohim said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Okay, so now let's look at this in order. Okay, so he worked and then there was an evening and then there was a morning. That was day one. Then the next day he works. He said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Okay, he was, he's working during the day. And then you who made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so and 
and Elohim called the firmament heaven. And so it was the evening and then the morning. That was the second day. Okay, so so look at the order of this. He he does the work, and then there's the evening, okay, the afternoon, the, the late in the evening, and then the morning, and then he starts a new day. So even even looking at this, I mean, you know, so the Jews' interpretation of this is that you know they completely disregard the upper part as being in the day and then they say that so the evening and the morning were the you know were the first day or the second day so they say that it starts in the evening and then the morning and then the day but that's completely out of order of the way it's written it's not written like that okay and then so if you go through all seven days it's exactly the same he he does what he does during the day and then it goes on and it says that the then there was the evening and then there was the morning and then there was the that was the end of that that day cycle Okay, so anyway, so trying to understand the, you know, Yahuwah's calendar and trying to understand Yahuwah's way of, of, you know, letting us know how the day is supposed to go and when the Sabbath is, is vitally important. Because here's one thing, let me go to uh, Exodus 31, 13. I want to show you something right quick. I know, uh, let's see. I know several of us have had this conversation before. Okay, so the Sabbath law right here, okay, starting in verse 12. And it says, and Yahuwah spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel saying, surely my Sabbath you shall keep for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am Yahuwah who sanctifies you. Okay, this is the sign. The keeping the Sabbath is the sign of being in covenant. If you're not keeping the Sabbath, then the scripture says you're not in covenant because keeping the Sabbath is the is is you know keeping the the Sabbath day is the sign of being in covenant. All right. So he put this out there and he made it super simple. And it, and, but we have a tendency to look at it and make it so complicated that we, it, it just, you, people can't figure it out. Well, it, it, it's, it's right there in front of us. It's simple. So, so, Mo, so Yahuwah spoke to Moses and he told the children of Israel. Now, I know a lot of the Christian teachers out there, they say that we're not Israel, that we're Gentiles. Well, if you want to be a Gentile, then go ahead, because Gentile literally means not in covenant. When you're looking at it from a Hebrew perspective, Gentile means not in covenant. If you want to be in covenant, then you will be Israel, okay? So uh, if you look at the new covenant, let's go to, I'm going to take you to Hebrews chapter 8. I know we covered a lot of this stuff pre in previous teachings, but this stuff is really important, and I want to make sure that we got it nailed down. Well, there it is. All right. Hebrews chapter eight. Okay. Now starting in about, uh, let's see. Okay. Let's just start in seven. Okay. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Okay. What was the fault of the first covenant? If you, it, it says, the scripture tells us that it's the people. Okay, so in a covenant, you have at least, it's, it's a contract. You have at least two parties, okay? There's, in this, you have Yahuwah's side and you have man's side. Okay, Yahuwah's side is perfect. He didn't let his, he didn't let his end of the, the bargain down. Man did, and that's the fault of the first covenant, okay? And it's, and it says, because finding fault with them, talking about the people, he says, behold, the days are coming, says Yahuwah, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, period. End of story. It doesn't say Gentile anywhere in there. It's Israel and Judah. So now, if you want to be part of the new covenant, you've got to figure out how to become Israel or Judah. Judah. So you got to even either become a natural born Israelite that keeps the commandments and, and has the faith in Yahushua the Messiah, or 
you have to keep the covenant and accept Yahusha as Messiah and be grafted in. So both of them have to keep the commandments and both of them have to have the faith that Yahusha was the Messiah. The difference in between Israel and Judah is Israel or the natural born. The Judah is we are grafted in. Okay. And it says, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant. And I disregarded them, says Yahuwah. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says Yahuwah. I will put my laws in their mind and I will write them on their hearts and I will be their Elohim and they will be my people. And none of them shall have to teach their neighbor and none of his, none, his brothers saying, do you know Yahuwah? It, for all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to them, uh, to, uh, to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember no more. Okay, now, this is the new covenant. He will put his law, his Torah, in our hearts and in our minds. And he will give us the want to to keep them. That's the Ruach Kodesh, the Holy Spirit. The Ruach will, will give us the want to and the power to keep the commandments because they're they're not hard if you go to first john 5 2 it says that uh, this is how you know that you love yahuwah is that you keep his commandments because they're not hard to keep so anyway you if you read jeremiah 23 it, it literally says that if you say that you can't keep the commandments that uh it that they're too hard that yahuwah will he will put you away and destroy you. He will destroy you and put you away forever. Okay. I just got a message saying that we're about out of time. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to unmute the mics and, uh, I think, are y'all unmuted? Billy? Let's see. How about now? Well, anyway, okay, so we're going to go ahead and end this. And, I think uh, you can unmute yourself. Uh, can you, you can't hear me? Okay. I can hear you. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and end this. And uh, like I said, it, I, I, we'll, uh, we'll pick back up on it, you know, sometime. Uh, you know, if, if anybody wants a, a, a further study in this, then we can, you know, we can go into it at a later date. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and Huh? Can you do me a favor and check that, that verse 13? Right Say it again, there, Lala. On Hebrews chapter 8, verse 13, where it says, in that he says a new covenant, he has made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is all ready to vanish away. Well, okay, so this new covenant supersedes the old one. In other words, this new one, okay, so if you look at the first covenant, he, he took responsibility for, for us being, or no, I'm sorry, we had the responsibility, because if you look, it says that you shall, you know, uh, do this, and you shall do that. It, our, it was our responsibility, and that was the problem with the covenant. Here in this new covenant, now he is responsible, because he gives us the Ruach Kodesh. Okay, okay. does that, is that and, and the Ruach Kodesh will, will, convict us and make us you know he the ruach kodesh doesn't make us do anything but when we sin he will quicken us and let us know that we are sinning and he gives us the want to to uh you know to follow him where the mm -hmm. old covenant that's that was where you know where we it, see the the flaw in that covenant was us the people and so anyway that's that's the difference does that make sense yes yes it does okay i'm glad you make sure because you hadn't touched on that and yeah I i'm sorry that, that because that's very important. Because, the, like I said, the old covenant it, it, it relied it relied on us to keep it, and man can't do that. Man is just we we were too stiff necked, we're too hard hearted, and so uh, Yahuwah took charge of the of the covenant, and He put His word in our heart and in our mind, and He gave us the ruach to to keep us on track. Okay. Okay. Still All got right. seven minutes. If you got any more questions, do what now? You still got seven minutes. I do. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, right. got any more questions? Duke say he has a question. Oh, he has a question. Go ahead. And it says about in the in the sunrise is the day, and in the evening is when the the, the darkness comes over, right? Yeah, that's the way I see it, no day. That's and, correct. And that, and that's the way I see it too. And it's like in the 12 hour window. I call it the 12 hour window, but the 24 hours in the whole day. Mm -hmm. Right. But see that now if when you look in scripture, you won't find a 24 hour day. You no, know, you it, no, you don't. No, you don't. But it's just the idea that you got 12 hours of darkness and 12 hours of daylight. That well that's yeah, that's correct. You know, and, and the part is is that knowing that the end of the day is that the 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 crest of the sun in the evening time, that's the whole day. The day has been gone. Right. Yeah, that's correct. Or that that's the way I see it. Yeah, and that's the way I see it too. Uh, you know, and it's like, yeah, that's correct. And that's the way I've been doing it. Living at the evening time, that's the end of the day. And the night is the resting moment for the next beginning day. You know, as it says, when he when he goes from one 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 morning to one evening, and then he prepares for the second day. Right. Of creation. So yeah, when you look at the scripture, the it goes in hours during the day, and then it 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 does go by hours at night. But you know, it calls it the night watch, and and you know, so there it it's it's all you know. You can't hardly tell what time it is during the night if you were to wake up, you because the moon might be in a, in different phases at different times. But during the day, you know, if the sun's shining, if there's no clouds or whatever, then you can look at the sun and tell. You can literally tell what hour it is by, and I, I can show you this, but it, it, it might take a little while, but the human body is built to where if you stand with your hand in front of you like this, this, if you put your hand, the bottom of your hand on the horizon, this is one hour. So for, then this would be two hours. Okay. And the thing yeah. about it is all humans are built according to the golden mean. And if you look golden mean up, it's a pretty incredible kind of thing. It's a mathematical formula that everything in the universe is built on. And so the, 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 it's the distance between your, you know, it, your eye and your hand. There, it's a ratio that's the same for everybody, irregardless of how big you are, how little you are. So the little people, their hand is smaller, but it's closer to their eye. Right. But that ratio is the same. So you can literally go outside with your hand and, 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 and check the hours and six, the sixth hour will be straight above you. And so, I mean, there, and there's six hours from, from the sunrise horizon to straight up. And then there's six hours from the straight up to the evening, you know, horizon. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, used to, I used to focus on the, uh, the hour of the hour, the sun down. Yep. The sun down. You know, when I became a truck driver, you know, that's really put me in the perspective of the time of the sunrise and how you can clock the day through the different spots of the sun in the sky. You know. Right. Uh, so yeah, I, I've, been, I've got a sun, I've got a sundial in my front yard. Next time you come over, remind me and I'll show it to you. Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, and you know, and it's just like all you have to do is slow down enough to pay attention, and you can figure that out. Yep. Because if you got to look up, though. That's right. Well, see, he put the sun, moon, and the stars out there for signs and seasons and days and years. So right. you know, it's it's there. He put that he put that stuff out there for us to help us, you know, know when the signs and the seasons and the days and the years. Now, you know. Anyway, that's that's what the scripture says. So, I just thought I'd touch on that, but yeah, yeah. what you're talking about tonight is like, yeah, that's right. Yep, yep, that's yep. right. You know, All right, so. looks like we got about two more minutes. Okay, Does anybody uh, have anything? Anybody got anything else? Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Well, I guess uh, we'll uh, go ahead and shut it down, and I'll try to send out the uh, 
the uh you know I'll, I'll put it on youtube and try to send it out so everybody can get it so i guess we'll see y'all in a day or so okay so um, we're closing we closing out for the night yeah i think so yeah we're just going to do this one session i think lala oh okay okay yeah. I'd like to keep them kind of short because I don't want to be real long-winded and you know, I want to, okay. I want to hit people kind of quick and hard and, but I want to get them some really, you know, interesting and, you know, uh, stuff that really pertains to what we're doing. Okay. Okay. Sounds All like right. a prayer to me. All right. Love y'all. Good... Do what? Want to have a closing prayer? Yeah, we'll do that. Father Yahuwah, we thank you for this lesson and, and Father, we just thank you for all that you are and all that you do. Father, continue to work in our hearts and our lives. Give us wisdom uh, uh, wisdom and understanding and knowledge in all of your word, in all that you do, in all that we study. And, Father, just give us what we need. And, Father, we just give you the praise and the glory. for It's in Yahushua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. all right. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Good to see you. <laughs> good to see everybody. Good to see you.